never ceases to amaze me how I can still find new Empire troops to cover, or at least ones I haven't covered yet. Today, we're back with Zack versus Boyka and Huntsman. Yes, the anti-large archers of the Empire. Uh, as archers, they are pretty decent, 160 range, uh, decent missile damage, you know, your typical four armor piercing, which is solid for bows, definitely. Um, yeah, and they also have Vanguard, obviously, Woodsman. Uh, can fire while moving, although, of course, don't fire 360. Have not that great of melee stats given the cost, but, of course, an extra 8 bonus versus large on their missile attacks. And I want to say, I, I need to do some more research on this, so don't take this as gospel, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that bonus versus large, of course, it applies to the missile damage, but I think it also gives an accuracy buff against those type of targets as well. I'm not 100% sure. I need to double check on that. But anyway, for the rest of the build here, Volkmar the Grim, some spearmen, uh, swordsmen, flagellants out on the flanks, Sigmar Sons in the center, one unit of Empire Knights, Bright Wizards, more Empire Knights over here. Up against Vampire Coast on this map, a little bit interesting terrain here. You can't necessarily l use direct line of fire artillery very well, and neither player opted for mortars. So this is what you get here. Got some deck gunners, handguns, several sirens, three of them. Uh, three bombers as well, and a bunch of deck mobs. Also, some scurvy dogs over here. Looks like a bloaty boy hidden in the woods. And, uh, yeah, who's the lord here in the back? Got Count Noctilus on foot. So, Huntsman, back to them. Yeah, just overall, great archer unit. 650 points is relatively expensive for how weak their melee stats are, so you definitely have to keep them protected. Um, but if you do, they can pay for themselves, uh, obviously against large targets. Their AP values are pretty good. They're not as good as, like, say, uh, Crossbowmen, although I think with the bonus versus large, it, they are actually better than Crossbowmen. Um, so against large targets, they will be. But uh, obviously, we'll compare, like, the range and so on to some of the other Empire ranged units at the end. But, yeah, just solid overall damage against any large targets, especially unarmored large targets. So, obviously, like Skaven, uh, Wood Elves, for example, Beastmen, all great matchups to potentially bring Huntsmen. Uh, Beastmen can be a little bit hard to protect them, but we've got Silver Bullets here just kind of as a comparison. You can see they do actually have longer range than the Hand Gunners. The Hand Gunners are more versatile against general armored targets, obviously, like, you know, armored infantry especially. But uh, the Huntsmen can definitely shoot armored infantry as well and do okay. They'll do even better shooting unarmored infantry, which is what they're going to have to do here because this is actually... Uh, I don't think there's any units in this entire build that count as large, so a bit of a curious replay to actually feature Huntsmen, but let's talk about them. I guess we'll kind of see in context of yeah, how they perform as basic archers. So, here, their role, you might not think uh, they're going to be great here, but at the same time, giving you that arc of fire at 160 range is very, very nice. Uh, the fact that they can also vanguard as well wasn't necessarily taken advantage of here. It's a little bit tricky to use, unless you go all in for, like, a ranged build with a lot of free company and huntsman both, which can be a bit risky. I have done it before against Vampire Coast. It works okay. Um, but yeah, this nice layered defense here from Coast... Volkmar going to do a little bit of a drive-through. You can see the focus fire from the Huntsman just does immediately crumble those zombie bombers. And, uh, the, again, the fact that they can arc fire here at a long range does make them quite helpful. Another thing, too, that helps them trade in a ranged fight is you can see their loose formation here. That is another advantage they have over crossbowmen and uh, handgunners, definitely. This loose formation does help them not get hit quite so hard. Um, a buy return focus fire. But yeah, pretty real damage coming in here. And at this point, a few melee engagements have ensued. Like over here on this flank, we've got these Empire Knights. Beautiful Fleming sort of ruin. It'll crumble some zombies, isolate these Sirens. Uh, we do have some zombie halberds mixed in here as well. But these Empire Knights are going to get a little bit of a kind of side charge in here. And do some really nice shock damage to them. Start to crumble them away going directly after the targets that threaten them. Here comes the bloaty boy, running into some flagellants that are already getting bombed out pretty significantly. Aren't much bloated up, but oh man, brutal damage even still. Probably should have actually run that into these huntsmen right there, but again, loose formation means they wouldn't take as much damage as, say, silver bullets would, and silver bullets have taken quite a bit of damage. 
hounds get in the back line. One of the huntsmen does get tied up with some zombies, which, uh, I mean, even then, like, again, 16, 17 in terms of stats, this is not going to be great for them. See how quickly they just fall apart here when they do get compromised by hounds. But uh, Empire Knights are going to try and screen there, see what forces they can salvage. Even still, we've got two more or less full health units of Huntsmen online. Handgun mobs moving up. They haven't actually been able to expend too much of their ammunition yet. And that is an issue on a map like this where, I mean, there's some decent lines of sight, but there's a lot of these kind of very small hills and so on. You can see that uh, it's not always easy for these direct line of fire units like handgunners uh, to get a bead, which is why the... Huntsmen provide you kind of a higher DPS replacement, more or less. Um, again, not as good against armored infantry, but against large targets will largely function the same, more or less. I mean, it's not going to be quite as much pure AP as handgunners, obviously, but they'll definitely do the job. And against unarmored large targets, especially, just absolutely brutal damage. But yeah, just dumping some shots in a nice little close arc here. Silver Bullets having a shootout with those zombies over there. But uh, these Huntsmen, <laughs> the Bombers come forward, and you see how... I mean, they are taking significant damage, don't get me wrong, but... Like, a packed-up unit of infantry take way more damage from those bombs. Cause, just because there's more models getting hit by the explosive damage, right? But uh, Volkmar riding through, trying to take out some Sirens. Balance power still pretty close, but a lot of that is held up by the fact that Noctilus uh, counts for... A lot of that, if you actually look around and take a look at the Vampire Count's forces, I mean, things are looking somewhat grim. They do still have quite a few Scurvy Dogs left, but there's still Empire Knights here as well. We've got some Huntsmen coming back from route. A nice little bombardment from Count Noctilus into Volkmar. Will it be enough, though? Hard to say. Beautiful Flaming Sword of Ruin. I have to say, Zach's Flaming Sword of Ruin cast have been very on point here. Letting those Empire Knights just absolutely wreck Sirens. Um, one thing a lot of people don't realize as well is Flaming Sword of Ruin does actually increase base missile damage and give flaming and magic damage on not only melee attacks but on missile attacks as well. So you can actually use it to boost up something like Huntsman, for example, uh, if the Empire Knights were to have been routed here or, you know, you got a situation where you could shoot Sirens out in the open with the Huntsman. I mean, that extra magic damage... Um, the fact they have zero armor, right? It doesn't matter at all that you have, quote-unquote, non-AP bows. Um, yeah, just a little food for thought there. Of course, you get the Kindle Flame Spike as well. So actually, using Flaming Sword on your missile troops, like I've, I've often used it with Pistoliers, uh, it can be absolutely devastating uh, to the right targets. Some more Huntsmen getting eaten by Doggos here. I mean, this is just thematic. Doggos do have literally zero armor, so the Huntsmen will actually punch them back a little bit, but they're quickly going to get routed. Empire Knights not quite there to save them in time. Yeah, but uh, in terms of the rest of the overall battlefield, again, you can see how much Noctilus kind of counts for the balance of power. Got uh, the Huntsmen, Silver Bullets, kiting away. That is another benefit of Huntsmen is their speed here that we can kind of see in comparison to Handgunners. 36 speed. It's not super fast as far as infantry standards goes, but it is decently fast. Enough to get away from almost all heavy infantry in the game. Um, and yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, zombies aren't exactly heavy armor infantry, but they are heavy mass infantry and kind of slow anyway. So they can easily outrun those zombies even when they're tired. They are very tired. <laughs> Another flaming sword here, though, as the melee units come in and collapse these sirens. Beautiful charge from those Empire Knights. These Empire Knights have done a great job as well. Volkmar finishing off some bombers in the background, and then it comes down to just Noctilus, which we all know this will take some time. And while we're fast-forwarding through this late game here, yeah, Huntsmen and Handgunners come forward. Huntsmen used last of their ammunition. Let's check in on the value on this one unit here. So keep in mind, this is a replay where, again, this is not the ideal situation for Huntsmen at all. Since they have no large targets to shoot at, they still end up generating a really nice value. And that a lot of that comes down to the ability to have that long-range arc of fire. And still have really nice damage. Anyway, yeah, this will go on for some time, but... Um, in terms of, yeah, matchups for Huntsmen, 
they're good in a lot of matchups. Basically, you know, dwarfs, you would expect probably not to use them there because they have almost no large units. Um, but in a lot of matchups, you can definitely make them work, especially if you use some armor sundering tools uh, to, to help debuff like heavy armor monsters. Uh, the armor piercing missiles are going to be better against like the heavier armor monster faction. So like Lizardmen, Tomb Kings, for example, um, you would probably want to take handgunners in those matchups. Matchups like Chaos, Norska, you know, where there's kind of more middle armor monsters. Norska even could, you could consider light armor for the most part, so Huntsman will definitely be great there. As these Huntsmen cheer on Volkmar in his long cycle charge of Noctilus. There we go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, again, a very non-ideal situation. There's the just, I guess, technically the bloated corpse, but other than that, no large units in this army at all. And the Huntsmen all still perform quite well, all things considered. Like, this one almost doesn't pay for itself, but even still, um, yeah, both these two do. In terms of other stuff in the army, I mean, infantry trades pretty decently. One of these swordsmen, especially, man, 1,200 value on a unit of state troop swordsmen. One of the reasons why they're so good. Super cost-effective. Uh, yeah, Volkmar not even doing that much hard carrying. Knights doing an okay job. Handgunners also. Not some solid damage. The silver bullets there. Playing for themselves. Excuse me. But, uh, yeah. For Boyka's side here, uh, the Sirenes were able to get some value, but not quite as much as you would have liked. The Hounds were definitely a, a high point, and I would say, kind of from a meta-analysis standpoint, on this map, you might want to option out these deck gunners for a mortar, just so you have some artillery to trade at range, you know, that doesn't rely on line of sight. There's some kind of long-range pressure. And then you cut the bloated corpse. I mean, it's a fun pick, but you definitely want another scurvy dog, and then I might even say you cut one bomber and go with a fourth scurvy dog. Like, I, for me, when I play Coast, I almost always take four scurvy dogs, just because I like to have as much mobility as I can when playing them, uh, in order to kind of get those isolations and chase routing units, maybe go after enemy ranged, because a lot of people will spam ranged against Vampire Coast. If you have a lot of mobile pressure, it can lead to some trouble for them, but anyway. Today is about the uh, Huntsman, <laughs> and if you want to go back and see a Huntsman where a video where huntsmen are shooting large. I'll have a, a video linked, probably in a pinned comment down below, um, where it was one of the craziest games I've ever played, where <laughs> huntsmen, I, I did one of those full vanguard builds I was talking about earlier with full huntsmen and free company. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and just kind of quickly compare the breakdown. I've come up, covered almost all of the Empire ranged infantry at this point. Uh, I think maybe I still need to cover archers. But, uh, so you've got a wide selection of ranged uh, missile infantry, right? And pretty good variation in terms of cost, so we'll kind of go starting from the bottom. Archers I haven't talked about yet, but literally, if you just need some ranged units and you don't have any, this is probably your best bet. 120 range is pretty bad, though. Their missile strength is also fairly pitiful. Only two, missile dam oh, two armor piercing missile damage, 17 overall is not great. Uh, free Company total missile damage on paper is actually lower, but you'll notice they have a full-on 90 unit models, whereas archers are at the standard 68, right? So consider that. You consider the fact they also have decent melee stats, uh, you know, fire while moving, vanguard. Free Company, a little bit of a different role, uh, kind of a hybrid missile and infantry unit, but definitely good in matchups where uh, you might have to fight off some low-tier summons, for example, or, you know, provide nice volume of fire at close range. Crossbowmen, same range as Huntsman, 160 range, right? And you look here, the missile damage is actually the same. Uh, 6 AP, 18 base, so slightly higher AP on the crossbows. And that will make them a little bit more versatile. Uh, they can just shoot, well, I, I should say more versatile specifically against armored infantry. Huntsmen are definitely going to be better against large. The loose formation, as we talked about, the, the vanguard firewall moving does give them some advantages, but crossbowmen... You're looking for a more cost-effective alternative, and again, you just need some ranged units, but you want them to have a little bit more punch. Crossbowmen, I think, are often overlooked and probably one of the under, un, unsung heroes of the Empire roster. I, I quite like them um, for a lot of similar reasons to the Huntsmen, you know, Arc of Fire, all that jazz, but just a little bit cheaper. Handgunners are your pure armor piercing, 145 base range, and uh, the missile strength on paper is pretty low. That's mostly because of long reload time, but consider that's almost all AP damage, and it's devastating. 
Another thing, too, of the gunpowders versus the bows, a point to consider is that gunpowder units, the missile speed is much faster. So if you're trying to shoot, for example, a flying unit, it's much more beneficial to have the guns because they're, you know, as, as the unit's flying around and flapping and whatever, the missiles are much more likely to connect because they just get there faster, right? Um, so a few things to consider. Of course, there's the arc, as I've mentioned several times. And then Huntsman at the top, 650. I mean, in terms of melee stats, they're really the same as handgunners, more or less. And uh, you can kind of think of these two as somewhat interchangeable. Basically, if you want the advantages of Huntsman, go with them. Uh, if you want pure AP, go with handgunners. I don't often take handgunners myself, because if I want just, you know, good AP... In fact, I usually go for crossbowmen, because they still have the arc, just a little bit more AP. I mean, it's not pure AP damage, but again, you can definitely get... Good value are armor sundering tools. Um, in terms of units that are comparable in other factions, I mean, you look at some of the other kind of mid-tier uh, skirmish units, right? Like Glade Guard are at 500. Um, slightly longer range, slightly higher overall missile damage, but of course they don't have the anti-large. 4 AP per shot, though, which is, com again, comparable to the Huntsman. Um, Bretonian Archers are cheaper, right? And I think they have less AP, I want to say. Bretonia. Basic Peasant Archers are 3 AP, yeah, so less. Um, the Fire Arrows, only 2 AP, so that's interesting. But of course, you don't have the uh, option to take Poison or Fire. Uh, you can give yourself Fire in several ways, but obviously no Poison, as you can with the uh, the Hagbane Tips and the, uh, you know, Poison... Uh, <laughs> what are Pox Arrows? That's right. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling a little bit now, but at this point, you can see the Huntsman, I mean... That you definitely want to keep them protected, but if you do, they can pay absolute dividends. Very, very good units. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.